Good afternoon, everyone. We are here to discuss a major impediment that prevails in our day-to-day -day lives, the cost of living. The cost of living, which many Singaporeans among us have to endure. Let us see what are their causes and also discuss what are the repercussions it will have on our fellow Singaporeans and is there something that can be done about all this? Recently, it was announced um, that who would be likely the fourth Prime Minister, which came after some wrangling. A few weeks prior to that, it was decided that the GST would be increased from 7 to 9%. Yeah. In 1990, we had the first handover. Okay, and then in 2004, we had the second handover, and the next one would be next year. I reckon it will be sometime in the middle of the year, right in between the two GST hikes. Okay, when one draws a timeline of all the handovers, or the three handovers, and all the GST increases. You can't help but notice there is a certain correlation in all the dates. Okay? It would be evident that there is a general correlation and there is something that is preferred in terms of revenue collection. After the first handover, GST was implemented, okay, 1st April 1994, some of you might remember. And what happened soon after that? The minister's pay was hiked, okay, that was after the GST implementation in 1994. And after that, 3%. During around the second handover, the GST was increased to by 4%. Now, the first GST implementation, minister's pay were raised and it was said we need to secure talents locally. After the second, around the second GST, increase of another 4%, mostly the foreign intact was in, foreign influx was intensified and this time it was to secure talents from overseas, foreign talents. So what happened? What about the rest? No talents? On the overall, the performance of the PAP over the 32 years. If you analyze, you would be left with a lot of unanswered questions. You might be wondering, why am I discussing political situation of the bygone era when we are supposed to be discussing cost of living today? Let us face facts. The cost of living today is essentially the cumulative effect, okay, largely the consequences of the policies of the PAP. It is not one year or two year, but it was over a long stretch, the various policies that had put us in this situation. Whenever the establishment matters are discussed, very often we hear the phrase, own self, check own self, okay, which actually originated from the establishment themselves. They themselves, okay, are the ones who had given way to this. They are the ones who introduced this, in fact. In the 1980s, it was a cliched joke. PAP means pay and pay. It is still there around today, but only thing, the joke is no more on the PAP. 
Okay, you know the, who the joke is on. Would you believe that the present day situation is a cumulative effect of what the policy failures had been all along? Cumulative and compounded. For 32 years, we had failed to rein in the, the tendency for the implementation of such policies, which had largely deviated resources away from the people and directed them towards the elites. With very contorted policies like no minimum wage. Remember, we are not talking about handouts for people who are not working. We are talking about people who are employed full-time and they were refused minimum wage. A lot of resistance were mounted against minimum wage. Now, their frequent statements when asked for explanation are often counterintuitive and contradictory. Let us look at some of their policies which they have introduced but which never saw daylight. Things like Swiss standards of living by 1999. It was announced in 1996. Next came in 2009. Upturn the downturn. Until today, no one has got a clear meaning of what it means. And then came cheaper, better and faster. We all know this does not make sense at all. At best, at the very best, you can have two of the three, cheaper, better or faster, not all three. Okay? What happened after that? Did the local and the foreign talents did make any difference to the lives of Singaporeans? After so long, do you feel they have made a difference? No. And we just heard recently there would be 180 million per annum per year to the media trust. What for? These are just some of the details that come to my mind. Actually, I wrote out a long list, but there won't be enough time. But I just took a few key pointers for the speech today. You please go back and list out all this. You would be shocked. The hiking of the minister's pay in 1990 caused the snowballing downhill of the establishment cost and now is phenomenally gathering speed. It had caused many who ought to have been concerned to disengage themselves from being concerned. They were unable to take corrective steps, even as things were being pointed out by the people. This is wrong. How can this be? Now, many would remember a minister was left speechless when he just made one statement about CPF. Okay, so it appears whenever someone has to interfere, even among them, to correct situation, it has to be done so at their own peril. Okay? That would force many of his colleagues to look the other way, even when things go wrong. And at best, you could expect them from them is a cosmetic statement. Okay? Sometimes even a ridicule. When there are too many elderly who are working in back-breaking jobs, the response he gave was, these are exercises they are undergoing for their health. No respite seems to be in sight. So clearly, the political system is in a state of deterioration, just like a machine when neglected by the owner. And here, we are talking about the political system as the machine and the owner are us. 
More and more would be required to keep them functioning normally, lubricate and maintain a facade of efficiency. Nothing would be done to reverse the situation by the PAP. Don't even dream about it. But all the damages, who suffers and who pays? No prizes for guessing. Inevitably, that translates into increasing tax by the political system, whether you like it or not. Many incentives and disincentives are shaped by the establishment to be applied on the people and to the officials to keep their policy making easier. They being merely there to uphold the interests of the establishment, the political interests, rather than the people's interests. That is now starkly evident and obvious to all. And over time, people are gradually getting disinterested in policy, politics. Is the abject lack of political participation seen in the establishment? Is it because that they have gotten things functioning like a clockwork? Or they are just being a mindless, stagnated entity? More of the later, isn't it? Politics formulated whether for econo uh, policies formulated for the whether for economics education employment health care or simply for retirement in the twilight years they very often seem to be centered on the upholding of political perpetuation rather than the genuine interests of the people if policies concerning people are in such a state what do you think about the taxation? Would it be in the interest of the people? But we often hear some questions like this. Do you know Singapore is a low tax country? The moment you hear this, at a, for a moment you have to scratch your head. How are you going to explain to such persons that what are taxes and how do they all add up ultimately to be considered as low tax or high tax. Okay, let us be clear. If the living cost continues skyrocketing and the wages of Singaporeans stagnate due to underemployment, okay, underemployment is there thanks to our system which does not even acknowledge its presence. Okay. If there is a skyrocketing cost and stagnation of wages, effectively what you have would be plunging buying power for the individuals. That's where we have a major issue of cost of living. His purchasing power would plunge. Yeah. Okay. All right. An observation which I made in GE. 2015 during your speech the increasing cost of living and the employability of Singaporeans being reducing over time is a double whammy which further becomes a triple whammy when you have curtailment of CPF withdrawal okay all these three things become a triple whammy and it does wonders for an individual, doesn't it? Finally, what is there left for us to do? There are many indicators that show that the PAP is worn out as a ruling party. Of course, they would not admit and they would instead deny, uh, deny vehemently. Mark out all those indicators on a take a large paper, mark out all the indicators of they being in decline okay and go and thoroughly research and where possible you join the dots and you will get a very dire picture a situation that needs urgently to be addressed by the people they will not address it for you examples of those indicators would be among others an extreme income inequality, 
a refusal to disclose the poverty line and the resistance to the to minimum wage loss the only cause of action would be to gradually start replacing them over over the next few years okay the many are simply contented with the glossing over of all these faults the natural consequence would be high maintenance establishment with an ever increasing funding needs hence the high taxes and the high cost of living thank you